Hey folks, I'm Troy and you're watching Troy Tube. And I recently mentioned that I was going to be doing more videos uh, regularly with, you know, little educational things in them. And one of our viewers happened to ask yesterday, what do I need to get started in sublimation? Which is going to be this video. That was my next video on the list. So hang around for a minute. We're going to talk about that. All right, so what do you need to get started in sublimation? We're gonna talk about the bare essentials here and I'll throw out a couple more recommendations. So I'm gonna assume that you probably have a heat press, whether it's a Cricut Easy Press or a conventional heat press. Uh, the Cricut Easy Press 2 is the one that gets hotter. Uh, so the Easy Press 1 will probably work okay, but it only goes up to 360 degrees. So uh, there are certain things that might not transfer as well as they would if you could get up around 380, 385. Some of the items 400 degrees to press for you know 45 to 60 seconds, depending on the material and everything. So I'm assuming that you already have a heat press or you're gonna get one. And then we're gonna talk about the sublimation side of things. So uh, it, our ink is a premium ink that's especially designed for the Epson EcoTank printers. These are consumer grade inkjet printers and when you buy them, you can buy them in retail, you can buy them in Amazon, Costco, wherever you want. And you basically just take the ink out of it that comes with it and you put our ink in its place. Now what's different? Our ink is a premium ink that's been designed for the print heads in these printers to run at the frequency that they run at. So most ink that you buy from Amazon or other places, most of it comes from China. There's a lot of quality control issues when it comes to chemicals and things of that nature in China, uh, where they, you know, they don't have the clean room facilities, things like that. So there's, there can be contaminants in the ink. It's just basically any sublimation ink that they can put in a special little bottle to make it, it put it able to, you know, easily to put it in a printer. This ink is a premium ink that's designed to be put in these inners to these printers to minimize clogs and uh, things of that nature. So, highly recommend our DPI sub ink. I don't know of another ink on the market that's designed for these Epson printers that way. This is for Eco Tanks, by the way, not the F series sublimation printers. Those printers, I believe they actually have the same print heads, but they run at a different frequency, so it requires a different viscosity ink. Uh, to run in those. We may have a solution for that soon, but we'll see. Uh, so uh, ink is one must along with your printer. Now printer selection on the, there's a video on my channel that's the DPI sub launch video uh, that I did a few weeks ago. I highly recommend watching that entire video. It's about 45 minutes long, so it is, it has, it has a lot of content. It's divided up into sections, so it's easy to follow. I talk a lot more in depth about which printer selection you wanna go for. And it boils down to deciding which size printer you want first, whether you wanna start with a basic letter and legal size, which can do up to eight and a half by 14. That's big enough to do like a car license plate. Or if you wanna go for the larger EcoTank 15,000 is one of the most popular models. I have one of those sitting over here. It will print up to 13 by 19. Now, a lot of people say, if you're gonna do it, get started, buy the big printer. I wish I'd have bought the big printer. Well, if your budget allows for it, go ahead. If you're just wanting to learn and play, maybe do small items like coasters, keychains, uh, can coolers, you know, the smaller type items, this size printer will work fine for that. Uh, you can get an EcoTank 2400 or one of the similar base model uh, printers for about $200. The ink is $69.99 for a full set of ink. So ink, paper, tape, and everything you need to get started for well under $300 way less than commercial printers. Uh, you know, you go to a sawgrass or something like that, you're spending $1,500, a couple thousand dollars just to get started. Now there's a difference, those are commercial grade printers, but these, uh, the way they're set up, and if you follow things correctly, you can get excellent results out of these, probably in my estimation, 90, 95% of the quality that you get out of the commercial printers. Um, so beyond your printer, like I said, you're gonna need the ink, the ink, uh, just a real quick word about our, how our ink comes. We sell our ink for $69.99. A lot of people will say, well, I can get it for half that on Amazon if I buy one of the other brands that a lot of people use. Well, that ink that comes from China and some other places, uh, and almost every brand I've not found very, I have, I have, actually none of the brands that I've tested that I've bought from Amazon, um, I'm not gonna name names in the video, but 
probably just about every brand you've heard of that comes from Amazon comes from China and it's very inconsistent I would say um, the uh, one of the big differences is in the price all four of our bottles are 140 milliliters most of those come either as 470 milliliters or they'll come with a 140 in black and a 70 milliliter in the colors and um, the uh, that so that's 350 milliliters hours you get 560 milliliters so it's a lot more ink when you boil it down calculate the price out per milliliter it's like 10 to 12 cents price increase that's not that much so be sure you use our, our DPI premium sublimation inks you're going to want paper so our paper uh, we will have an ICC profile, by the way, soon for um, our paper and our ink. An ICC profile is something that most people don't have to worry about unless you're reproducing things that need to be exact colors. For an example would be if I uh, make a hundred keychains for someone that has a corporate logo on it, and then uh, three, six months later, they want another hundred keychains and that logo has to match the exact colors to where you can't tell the difference with your eye. That's what the ICC, prof ICC profile does. It's a match between the ink and the paper, okay? And our paper comes, uh, we have four different sizes. We have 8.5 by 11, 8.5 by 14, eight, uh, 11 by 17, and 13 by 19. Uh, the 8.5 by 11, 11 by 17, and 8.5 by 13 are coming 100 sheets in a pack. For whatever reason, the 8.5 by 14 comes with 110 sheets. So, uh, very good quality, consistent paper. Uh, quick word on paper storage. You want to generally just keep it in its box unless you're ready to use it. Uh, exposure to UV light can be bad for the paper. Uh, exposure to too much humidity can be bad for the paper. So, you know, keeping it stored in a cool, dry place with, uh, without exposure to UV light is a good thing. So, make sure you take care of your paper. The other thing you'll need is heat tape. Uh, so, you can get all these things on our website, by the way, at bulkvinyl.com. Uh, the heat tape is used to tape your item down to your paper before you press it, so it'll hold it in place. Uh, this is a high temperature um, uh, heat tape, uh, so we have that on our site. And then beyond that, there's a lot of optional things you want to consider. Uh, you'll want to get some blanks, some things that you can make. We have these on our website. These are test sheets. These are like four and a half, maybe four by five and a half inches, something like that. Uh, these are like little kind of a, a canvas feeling uh, textile material that you get a pack of 10 for a buck 50. Okay, so I had someone the other day bought 10 packs of them. These are great for, you know, testing colors, playing, test prints, whatever you want to do with them. You could press both sides and use them twice. Uh, you could you know, cut them in half if you're doing small things and press with them. Uh, so they're really, really handy to keep on hand to test when you're learning especially, but also good to keep on hand for later on when you need to make something and you want to see what it's going to look like before you put it on an item and risk losing a blank to a mistake or something like that uh, when you do that. So I really recommend these test sheets uh, be added to your cart as well. Uh, once you have kind of, you know, gotten past that fear of getting started, uh, getting past the test sheets, you're ready to make something, some of the, the lesser expensive items to make are generally small items, keychains, coasters, can coolers. Uh, those are great items to experiment and play with because you know, most of the time you really don't care if you mess one up. Uh, when it comes to a coaster, maybe you make one for your kid's room or something, and that way if you mess it up a little bit, they're gonna be happy with it. It's not a big deal. So, uh, or maybe you're, you know, if you have an outdoor living space, you want to put uh, coasters out there in or something. Just giving you some ideas of things that you want to uh, think about having on hand when you get started. Now, another item a lot of people like to have uh, is heat proof or like heat uh, resistant gloves. Uh, we're going to have these. It's probably going to be a few weeks before I get them in. But the uh, you know they're heat resistant gloves that because when you take items out of your heat press. You know, you've pressed them for 385, maybe 400 degrees for 45 seconds, 60 seconds. If you're doing mugs, like ceramic mugs in the Cricut mug press, those take a few minutes and the entire mug is hot. You wanna be able to handle this stuff easily without burning yourself and be able to get it out and lay it out so it'll cool for a minute. Uh, you don't wanna you know, yank it out of the press and rip the paper right off because it's still hot. You can cause a ghosted image by doing that. Um, so keep in mind 
uh, you know, those things when you're you're working with these and pressing these items because they are very hot, very tough to handle without those heat resistant gloves. So uh, you can get those on Amazon if you can't wait for us to get them. Uh, a lot of items you don't really need to that for too much because they're not too hard to handle. So if you take a can cooler out of your heat press, yeah, it's going to be hot. You can just kind of pick it up by the paper and handle it uh, or use a dish towel or something like that, maybe an oven mitt. Um, but you know, I generally those kind of things I can just take out and lay over on the table, let it cool off, not a big deal. Other items, like I said, you want to have a, a pair of, of heat resistant gloves to handle these things and uh, deal with them after you've pressed them. Another item you're going to want to have on hand is some butcher paper. So plain brown butcher paper, not uh, colored paper, not the pink butcher paper, not white, not coated, not waxed, anything like that plain brown butcher paper. Now, why do you need butcher paper? So uh, when you press uh, something with sublimation, what happens is that ink turns to gas and it bonds to the polyester. So uh, whether it's a polyester garment or a hard object like a ceramic mug that has a coating on it, uh, and they have to have this coating on it, you can't just get a mug at Dollar Tree and sublimate onto it and you really can't do that yourself with with hard objects either uh, there are some sublimation sprays things like that i've tested worked with some of those things it's not an easy thing to do for that kind of stuff so don't you know, think you can go out to dollar tree buy a can of subla glaze off of uh, amazon and spray it and it worked great it just doesn't work that way anyway uh, so the butcher paper what it does when you heat press and that ink turns to gas the polyester kind of it opens it, it's like it opens up the pores and it allows that ink to transfer and go into that the fibers of that polyester and basically dye the material uh, butcher paper uh, what it does is, is it tends to absorb the excess ink so if you put a uh, say something uh, that's a full bleed, meaning you're pressing it and uh, it's going to be something like a keychain where it, the image is bigger than the keychain is so that it goes to edge to edge. You're going to want to sandwich that between two pieces of butcher paper so that when you press it, that butcher paper will absorb that ink. Uh, Teflon sheet doesn't do that because Teflon is non-stick, so you can cause problems by using a Teflon sheet uh, without butcher paper. I mean, I just leave my Teflon sheet in my press, but I, I sandwich the item in between the butcher paper when I press it. If I don't have butcher paper handy and it's something small, uh, depending on what it is, uh, if like if I, I earlier today I pressed a single keychain, and it was only like this big, so I printed I printed that out on the sublimation paper got it in position, taped it and everything, and then I simply folded the sublimation paper in half and it was way more coverage all the way around it, put it in a heat press, worked fine. Uh, sometimes I'll grab a sheet of copy paper off the printer next to me and just throw that over top of it if I don't have butcher paper handy. That works well uh, too. So you have some options there, but uh, for all intents and purposes, brown butcher paper is what you're going to want to have on hand. Uh, to do that, you can get big rolls of it from Amazon. You can get it at the grocery store. You can get it at Sam's or Costco. Uh, you know, it's really inexpensive. I think you get, a, I mean, you get a, it's really inexpensive. You get a big roll of it for almost nothing. So just get you a roll of that, keep it on hand. And uh, again, not the colored butcher paper, not white, not coated, not waxed or anything like that. Plain brown butcher paper is what you need. Another thing you're going to want for sublimation is images and software to print those images. Uh, so you have many options here. Uh, so uh, if you don't have, and many people don't have the necessary skills to use something like Photoshop, and um, I, I haven't finished the e-learning course on Photoshop yet, so it's not out there quite yet. It's probably gonna be a couple of months on Photoshop. But um, you know, if you want basic uh, software to uh, you know, change your layout design, things like that, you have a couple pretty good options for that. One is Canva. Uh, Canva has a free edition and they have a paid edition where you get to license, uh, but you need to read the license about how you can use those images or not. Um, and then, uh, of course, here lately, one of the things a lot of people have been trying out and loving is my TroyTube designer beta. So if you go to design.troytube.net, you log in with your same username and password as TroyTube and bulkvinyl.com. It's all one username and password. And this is a design layout program, not really an editor, but you need to use software to create your images for printing and ultimately pressing on uh, to your planks. 
So my design software, I'll have a full e-learning course on it soon. There's a couple of videos out there now that kind of show you the basics of how to do it and everything. There are templates that will be loaded for every blank that we sell for the most part. And you do your design and layout visually on the screen around a template of the actual item that you're working with. And then when you download it, you're able to print it very easily. There's another video on my channel about the best uh, Windows printing utility. This is for Windows, not Mac. I uh, don't have a solution for Mac yet, um, or haven't even looked at that. But uh, the Fast Stone Image Viewer is one of the best things I've found for viewing and printing images. Uh, there's a video for that on my channel uh, that's right here in the same playlist for sublimation. And it allows you to easily uh, browse your folders, click on an image, click print. It gives you very simple, easy access to your printer controls and printer properties so you can mirror, change your paper type, uh, all of those things. Speaking of paper type, I uh, should have mentioned when you print, make sure on your Epson printer driver you are printing with uh, presentation paper matte. Comes out excellent for sublimation paper. Uh, set it to high quality and then whether or not you mirror it in your printer driver is going to depend on whether or not your image is mirrored. So uh, what, I'll, what I'll tell you is when you print on sublimation paper and when you look at it, if it has words or if it's visually looks correct, it's backwards so it should be mirrored so if your words uh, so if your design has words on it when you look at it on the paper it should be mirrored and reversed if it doesn't when you press it it's going to come out backwards on the item the garment the coaster whatever you put it on same thing with an image so uh, you know if you you know, have a, a picture of someone you're putting on uh, say a coaster or whatever a keychain and they have a mole on one side of their cheek if you don't mirror it's going to be on the other side of the cheek on the image so they're going to be backwards so make sure you pay close attention to your mirroring and, and all of that. And then there are some products, we'll probably have some products that you print directly on that you press onto uh, garments or things like that, uh, where it's kind of like the inkjet printable transfers, uh, but you print on it, you do print then cut, but you don't mirror it because what you're printing on is the actual surface that you'll be looking at when you put it on the garment. So just some thoughts come to mind. I'm getting off track a little bit, but there's so many things, uh, so many aspects of this that I uh, have to share and knowledge to share and, and a lot of things to learn myself to uh, share and convey back to you guys. But, you know, for the most part, you're going to want, again, a recap, your printer, your paper, your heat tape, your ink, and I highly recommend the test sheets. Uh, as well as some uh, you know, inexpensive blanks. We have plenty of those on our site. Some of the great ones to play around with are the little car coasters or neoprene. Um, Keychains are really inexpensive. Uh, some of those things you get, we sell them in multi-packs and stuff. So don't hesitate to pick up a few of those, throw them in your cart. And once you've you know, played around with the test sheets and you feel comfortable and you can get some consistent results and everything, move on to a blank, start small, start simple. Just like when you bought a Cricut machine, you started working with vinyl or HTV, your best to start small and simple, okay? Now going back to the software and images, uh, sorry I trailed off a little bit there, but um, you know, aside from the designer software, you're gonna want images themselves. In my designer software, it is attached to Pixabay. So you can search and find a lot of images on Pixabay totally for free. Uh, we have tons of clip art in there now. We're going to have a metric ton later. I mean, there's, there's a lot of clip art on the way uh, that will be in there. And these are kind of cartoonish looking clip art, but I think a lot of people will find uses for them. And um, uh, so aside from that, you'll want to buy probably designs from somewhere like designbundles.net. Uh, there is a link in the video description below. If you click that link, when you buy your sub sublimation designs or any other designs, we get a little commission from that and it helps our calls and helps our company. So uh, we appreciate that. If you buy from design bundles or font bundles that you use our link uh, to buy uh, from those sites when you buy those designs. We will have more and more sublimation designs on our site. Um, some will be free, some will be paid, and then some of them will be paid, but if you're a uh, membership subscriber, they will be free to you. So a lot of different options. Um, and I should mention, uh, finish up this video by mentioning, one of the things I'd recommend is the Master Crafter uh, 
membership on our website at ballvinyl.com for the essentially $3.99, well, it's $3.49 to the end of April. So if you're going to subscribe, get it in by the end of April. It's $3.49 for this year. Uh, at the end of April, it's going to go up to $3.99. So uh, you pay for that a year in advance, and you get uh, a lot of benefits that will continue to grow over time as our company grows too. Uh, you get access to the e-learning courses. Uh, you get a 10% discount on Orcal purchases. You get a 5% discount on Thermoflex. You get um, a 3% discount across the board on all other products except for clearance items and maybe some sell items sometimes. Uh, but we'll keep adding to those benefits uh, as time goes on. And I uh, highly recommend picking that up along with your test sheets and a few blanks and everything in addition to the things you absolutely need to use sublimation. So, Hopefully that's been helpful to you uh, to think about the things that you need to get uh, to get started in sublimation. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to place them down below the video.